Good morning. We're glad to see everyone this morning as we gather here at First United Methodist Church for worship this morning, and uh, glad to have each of you here. My name is Pastor Bob Rudabush, and I uh, want to welcome you to uh, worship today on this fifth Sunday of Lent. Uh, we uh, want to remind you and are grateful uh, for the many years of our radio broadcast, but that will be ending after Easter Sunday. So we hope that you will, if there are needs, the connections with people in the congregation that you know of, uh, we have multiple ways to connect with them. Uh, and in fact, we can even do a DVD of each service and deliver it and all of those kinds of things. So uh, please let us know about that. Also, we want to welcome those who are worshiping with us on live stream today. And uh, we uh, hope that you'll take a moment to click in the right-hand corner uh, and fill out your Connect card. See, even online you can fill out a Connect card. And so I guess we would encourage all of you as well here in worship uh, to tear off that Connect card and fill that out and place it in the offering basket uh, at that time. Also in your, in your uh, bulletin is a, a prayer list. Uh, today we especially want to be uh, mindful of the Rich Greeno family and also Warren Walsh who died uh, this last week. Uh, his service will be sometime in the future and so uh, we just want to be praying for Ardella. Uh, they were longtime members who usually sat about right over there every week uh, faithfully. So uh, uh, we just want to remember uh, the Walshes in prayer as well. Um, also, uh, we just want to remind you that our, our mission here is to make disciples of Jesus Christ uh, for the transformation of the world. And we do that by being the sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement in the heart of Sioux Falls. There's two main events that I want to make our attention to coming up this Holy Week. Uh, we're going to have worship every day, uh, and with the in, and Wednesday will be the Road to the Resurrection, and a, it's an all-church event, that we hope that you'll come and join us on that Wednesday night, but we'll have worship at noon and 6.30 on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Also, uh, this next Saturday, we're hosting a, a community neighborhood extravaganza, and we still need some volunteers to help us with that as we engage our neighborhood. Uh, we're going to have like an egg hunt and a celebration, and so uh, if you've got some time to help us from uh, 9 to noon on uh, Saturday, we'd sure appreciate you doing that, and you can put that on the Connect card. Our, our mission of the month is Samaritan's Feet. Uh, we always uh, help with giving out shoes in August, and so we want to begin taking that offering now so that we can uh, meet and uh, encourage and, and give away those shoes in August. Again, we're glad to have each of you here, especially our visitors and guests. We're always glad that you're with us today. So we now invite you to stand and greet the two or three persons around you as we welcome one another in worship today. Welcome to the Sunday worship service at First United Methodist Church at 401 South Spring Avenue in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We're glad you're worshiping with us today. You may also tune into our live stream broadcast at www.sfumc.org at 830 and 945. Today's sermon title is God on the Move to Empty Ourselves. Pastor Bob Rudabush is giving the message today. We hope you find the worship Good service morning. a blessing for your life My this week. My name is Liz Rizak. Please join in the call to worship. We gather as Jesus' disciples and be in his presence. Here in this holy place, let us breathe in the power of God's promise of strength for the journey of faith and release all that would hinder us from showing our love in this world. Like Mary of Bethany, may we find and offer something costly of ourselves to serve others. And like Jesus, awaken us to the promise of new life for the world, this community, and for one another. Amen. Good morning. Our hymn of praise this morning is in the faith we sing, number 2216, when we are called to sing your praise.
During this time, we take a few moments to go to the Lord in prayer in a variety of ways. So as we begin, please join me in the unison prayer of confession. Because we have preserved our joy to long winter of despair, storing them in the dark corners of our souls, we have forgotten its gritty taste. Because we have put a tight lid on our joy and put it in the back of the pantry, we have forgotten how it can tickle our noses. Because we are so busy prattling pious platitudes about the poor, the least, the lost, we ignore your words, which anoint them as your children. Because we have put up the shutter and storm doors to keep your future from sneaking in, we have missed the sweet breeze carrying your hope to us. Because we are who we are, restore us, holy grace, and make a fragrant offering to the world. And now we're going to take a few moments for each of us in our own way to go to the Lord in silent prayer, to raise up our own thoughts and words of thanks and, of course, our concerns and desires. We pray today, especially for those who are sick and ill and in your need, O oh Lord. And we raise up the name of Lily Steele Chavez, who is currently in Sanford Hospital. Heavenly Father, as we have heard in the past few weeks and will continue to hear today, you, O oh Lord, are on the move. You are on the move in this world. You are on the move in our nation. And you are on the move in our lives. We want you and the Holy Spirit to come beside us as we seek to move with you and work in your name. Our hearts and minds are filled today with the sights and sounds of a new spring. A time that is so fitting that as we move toward Forgiveness, grace, and eternal life, we think of you. We think of these things that have been brought to us by your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are blessed, and we know it. There is excitement and a feeling of new life within us as we continue on this journey toward Palm Sunday and toward the cross, but most important, Easter that grand and glorious day when everything seems to stand still, as once again, we are struck with a great feeling of love and affection for all you have given us and continue to give us. We thank you for all of this and more as we come to you with this prayer, the prayer that your son Jesus Christ taught us long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord gives us much, and now is the time for us to give back some small part of this to support the works of this church that are done out in the world in his name.
extravagant God, lavishing love on our poverty of heart, inspire us to give with generosity, to love life so that we may find it again, and thus the world will be filled with the fragrance of your love through Jesus Christ, who offers himself for us. Please be seated. And now we shall be treated to a gift of music by the chancel choir, the Sacred Heart Harp Suite. Excuse me, the scripture is from John 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. 
Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We just uh, remind ourselves that one of the big events, uh, service events in the life of our church is our May Day event. We've been doing it now. This will be our third, maybe our fourth year. And uh, our goal is to have 500 volunteers uh, within our church and neighbors and friends that you can invite uh, to sign up to be in service. In fact, we're having not only on, it's on a Sunday afternoon, but we'll also have projects on Monday morning. So please uh, Visit with Lynn Jones or others. There's a sign up in the back. Uh, a May Day event. It's a great volunteer opportunity to serve uh, in mission uh, through our church. Uh, we also have been using the uh, sermon series God Moves. Uh, God Moves Us. Uh, the first sermon was uh, looking at how Jesus faced the temptations and how God moves us through those temptations of life. Uh, we also looked at you know, not wavering in our faith and overcoming the obstacles of faith uh, as uh, we experience God moving in our lives. God moves to help us bear fruit for the kingdom of God. And last week, Taylor talked to us about how we run for God and God runs towards us. Uh, this week, we're talking about how God empties, uh, how we empty ourselves as we look at uh, Mary, uh, the uh, sister of Lazarus and her extravagant uh, love today. So let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your uh, presence with us. We know that you truly are a God who moves, not standing still. You move in our lives. You've moved through these stories. You've moved through this season of, of Lent as we journey with you to Holy Week. Bless us in the hearing of your word, that we may truly be open to your spirit. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. A little girl was uh, running to her grandmother, and uh, she took, you know, got the big hug from grandma. She said, mmm, you smell so good, grandma. Is that oil of old lady? Is that oil of old lady? Yeah, I, that went better than I thought it was going to be. So, uh, you know, I did that with my wife, and she didn't even respond. So I was thinking, well, this, we're just going to have to see how that works. But, you know, the aromas, you know, our sense of smell, if you really realize it, is very powerful. And think about it. It really brings about a lot of memories in life. I don't know about you, but for me... Um, as I think about um, my grandmother and my, my mom's sister, my Aunt Doris, they, uh, when I was growing up, you know, that was back in the day, we didn't have KFC and all that stuff, you know, but they would, uh, they would fry chicken, you know, in a skillet, and they'd, you know, kind of get the, the flour and everything, uh, some kind of a white batter that they would cook it in, and, you know, they would usually cook it outside, and so that, that aroma would just, uh, you know, you'd be starving, like, when are we, when are we eating? Uh, you know, and those, those are memories that not only talk about the food, but they're memories that help me remember my grandmother and uh, my Aunt Doris. Those aromas and smells are critical and bring back great memories in our lives. 
Well, today we are hearing a story uh, right before Holy Week. Uh, as you noticed in the beginning of the passage, it said that Jesus had gone to Bethany, a town not far from Jerusalem, and there he went to spend time with Mary and Martha and, of course, Lazarus, who he had raised from the dead. Now, we know uh, and have a sense that uh, Mary, Martha, and uh, Lazarus were, were relatives of Jesus. And, you know, we uh, know that in chapter 11, we have the very powerful scene in John chapter 11, the very powerful scene of Lazarus being raised from the dead by Jesus. And when you read in the uh, last section of John 11, we read where the Jewish and religious leaders, really this, this raising Lazarus from the dead, uh, put fear in them. Fear that the, the Romans would come and squash him because here we got this new leader that everybody would possibly follow. So Caiaphas, the high priest, said, it is better for one man to die. It is better for one man to die. And so it says in the scripture that they began to plot, how are we going to get rid of Jesus? How are we going to kill him? With that backdrop, Jesus comes to share a meal with his close relatives and friends. It's interesting in our story, Mary takes a bottle or a flask of perfume and she comes and she comes to Jesus and she pours out this perfume on his feet. And then she takes her hair. And this was kind of a scandalous thing too. She dropped her hair and she wiped his feet clean. Now that, that seems kind of strange to us. But it's a very powerful act of love. On the other hand, Judas, who uh, was one of the 12 disciples, and we know later, as it said in the scripture, betrayed Jesus. <coughs> Judas says, hey, you know, this perfume, it's expensive. And in fact, in our, in our mind, if you think about it for a moment, this perfume in our day would have probably, it was a year's salary. Or for us, 300 denarii could be equivalent to $10,000. Can you imagine? Mary has saved up for this moment, this very expensive perfume to pour onto Jesus. But all Judas sees, and rightly so, is something maybe we would say too. Well, you know, this, this is very expensive. Why didn't she just sell it and take the money and then we could have given it away to the poor? Now, that's pretty reasonable. And in fact, I think if we would examine it a little closer, we'd think, well, yeah, Jesus would say, yeah, Judas, you're right. But you know how Jesus is in the Gospels. Jesus never does what we think is right. He says, leave her alone. She's done a great thing. You will always have the poor with me, but you won't always have me. Hmm, kind of an interesting statement. Mary, showing extravagant love. Judas, in a way, because, you know, we get a hint that he wasn't really concerned about the poor. <laughs> he was more about getting more money into the treasury that he was manager of and that we find out later that he stole from. But his... His sense of goodness comes out of more of a selfish desire. Well, Mary literally empties herself. She pours out extravagant love. Now, why did she do this? Well, I would imagine one thing is, of course, that Jesus raised her brother from the dead. I mean, what a miracle. She was so grateful to Jesus for raising her brother Lazarus to life again. She didn't know any other way to express her undying love. And I would imagine that Mary and Martha and Lazarus, they heard the rumors that the religious leaders were out to get Jesus, that Jesus was probably going to go into Jerusalem, 
and their face resistance so heavy? Because Jesus kind of hints at it. He says, leave her alone. She's preparing for my burial. An extravagant love. In fact, we could say that Mary gave it all. She literally shows us the power of generosity and her love for Jesus. Again, the disciples always seem to be a step behind. Here Jesus says, you will always have the poor with me, but you'll not always have me. You know, Judas said it was a waste. And you know, let's be honest, there are times when we, in the life of the church, we, we have these kind of disagreements. Well, why did we use our money for this when we could have helped the poor? You know, why did we do this nice thing to the building? Or why did we do this particular item like, it's like, you know, a, a young lady coming up to her dad and said, Dad, I'm engaged. And I'd love to have a beautiful wedding. And he goes, you know what? Why don't we just have you elope? It'd be cheaper. Right? But we lavish up. I mean, when my daughter got married, I'm thinking we never would spend this kind of money. But it's about extravagant love. It's about going, I mean, this is something we have to celebrate. Mary, in her soul, said, I, I need to express my extravagant love in response to Jesus' powerful life in mine. She saw it firsthand. Her brother was raised from the dead. And she knew that Jesus was going to face most difficult circumstances in life. And so she said, you know what? The only way that maybe I can bless him is to offer perfume to him and wash his feet and you can smell the aroma can't you you can smell the aroma because it said in the scripture the perfume filled the room of her gracious love in another place in this particular story is used is in the gospel of Mark and there it says this story what she has done for Jesus this story will always be remembered Forever. In essence, Mary calls you and I, in our journey with Jesus, to empty ourselves. Now, what do we mean by empty ourselves? To truly offer ourselves to God in service. There was a man who uh, had become very bitter in his life. He had a lot of illnesses in his life, and ended up in the hospital for the umpteenth time. And, and it got to the point where he said to a nurse one late night, he said, could you just give me something to end it all? And the nurse went over and found the Gideon Bible and came over and opened it up to John 3.16 and said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. She said, this will help you end it all only in a different direction. He heeded those words that night, and it literally transformed his understanding of his life. That nurse figured out there's a place where we have to empty ourselves to recognize the powerful gifts of God in Jesus Christ. In our church, coming up after Easter... We're going to create a challenge for all of us because we're uh, doing a capital campaign beyond the building, believing in our future, and it's a way that we can continually continue the legacy of our church by enhancing our facility. Now, you know, there's a lot of opinions around all of that, but again, when we think of this story of Mary, there are many ways for us to do good for God. There are ways that we can completely offer ourselves and empty ourselves in mission and service to God through our congregation, through our church. We have many opportunities for that, to offer ourselves 
to empty ourselves. He was a surgeon who went on a mission trip every year. And as he went to this poor country, he would do surgery on a variety of people. And then he'd stay two more weeks where then he would go back and do uh, post-operative kind of visits. And he'd go to their homes. And this one particular uh, family, uh, he noticed that they were very poor. Uh, but they were very, uh, the woman was just overwhelmed by how this surgeon had helped her life. And he noticed that all they had was a rabbit and two chickens. Now, this woman would comb the hair of the rabbit and weave it into some things that she would sell at the market. And the chickens, you know, obviously would lay eggs, and that was kind of their, their meals. And so the surgeon said, yes, he, she invited him to stay for lunch, and he said, yes, he would stay. But he had to go make one more visit, and then he'd come back. Well, when he got back... He noticed that uh, there was a big pot uh, uh, cooking, and in this pot was the rabbit and the two chickens. He wept because he realized she emptied everything to host him for lunch. Their very livelihood because they were so grateful for what he had done for them. My friends, Mary of Bethany is pointed out by Jesus as saying, let her alone. She's preparing me for my burial. You'll always have the poor with you. But you won't always have that opportunity to pour out extravagant love in my name. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the power of your undying love for us. And so we pray that as we examine in our own hearts and hear of the witness of Mary of Bethany, that you would speak to us to go deeper, to offer ourselves more fully, to empty ourselves in extravagant love. For we ask this in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, Amen. Will you join me as we share in the Apostles' Creed together? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today we have a great opportunity uh, to come and experience God's extravagant love as we come forward for and experience the gift of the meal, the meal that Jesus offers to each of us. So we invite you to turn in your hymnal or also on the screen to page 17 as we share the great thanksgiving and the, and the sharing of the bread. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and it is a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In love you made us for yourself, ourselves. And when we have fallen into sin, and become subject to evil and death, your love remain steadfast. You bid your faithful people cleanse their heart and prepare with joy for the Easter feast, so that renewed by word and sacraments and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, you may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so, 
with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. <laughs> of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup and after he'd given thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. May you do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves, each one of us, we offer ourselves a praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 United Methodist Church, our communion is open to all who want to come and experience the life-transforming gift of Jesus Christ in their life. Uh, we invite you, the choir will come first to receive, and then the ushers will assist you by coming uh, down the outside aisles to receive the bread, and then if you're able uh, to kneel or stand and to receive uh, the cup and then return to your seats by the center aisle. Uh, we have offering baskets for the food pantry if you would like to make a gift uh, to help those in need. And if you need gluten-free bread, we have that available here to my right, to your left. Uh, please work your way <coughs> over there uh, to use that uh, gluten-free bread. Today. I invite those who are helping us to come forward at this time. And reminder that we also will be singing hymns of faith as we share in the gifts.
join me as we share in the prayer of thanksgiving? Let us pray. O God, our rock our and our salvation, salvation, we thank you that we have gathered around your banquet table. We thank you that we have received the bread of life. We thank you that we've received the cup that helps us to be your living vine. We thank you that we have come together to be living stones for your spiritual house. Lord, may we be a holy priesthood, your own people, for you call us out of darkness into light. Be our cornerstone. Amen. We invite you to stand as we share in our sending forth. Will you join me? Chosen and beloved of God, let us go forth to pour out God's extravagant love on all we meet. Let us keep our eyes on the prize, the call of God to new life in Jesus Christ. We go out rejoicing and declaring God's praise. We go to be a sanctuary of Christian hope, love, and encouragement in the heart of St. Paul's. Amen. Again, we're glad to have each of you here this day. We invite you to stay for coffee and fellowship. And uh, we hope you have a, a great day and a blessed week. We uh, share in our sending song, Move Me, number 471. <laughs>